uh, this panel discussion where we're going to go into more detail about fireware and the opportunities from various of our um, esteemed speakers here from across Europe who have got deep experience of the digital economy and indeed the application domains that fireware are playing within. This is called The Wonders of Firewares and how it can help you, the entrepreneurs and SMEs who are here today. And we are looking forward to you taking up the technologies. Um, uh, we have Nuria, Gianluca, Christoph and Alexander here to share with us their views. Our first contribution is from Alexander Terenborn, who is the head of the unit in the development of convergent ICT at the Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs and Energy in Germany. And I think, Alexander, you're going to show us some slides and give us your overview. Okay. Thank you. So thank you very much. Uh, the slides should be coming in, but don't worry, there are uh, quite some, uh, so uh, I will go through that very, very fast, <laughs> and only the gist of the story. Okay, so where should I just, ah, uh, no, I think it's coming, okay. Um, yeah, thank you for giving the opportunity. Uh, just very briefly, uh, I promise um, some overviews of our philosophy, what we do. Um, and uh, are you steering it from up, up there? Okay, then very quickly, could you present the first slide, please? Um, yes, uh, the German digital economy, uh, there's only one thing that is important that we are still num that we are number five in worldwide ranking, so uh, there's room for improvement, as Mr. Herman also said. So uh, we have to work um, very hard, uh, also in Europe, that we will become number one, or at least that we get to the winning teams one, two, or three. This is very important. So could you get the next slide? Uh, these are just uh, some political statements. I guess uh, you, can, uh, you can read them later on. Most importantly, our minister said that uh, beside energy transition, the digital agenda is the central challenge for our economy. So this is the core issue, and uh, therefore the digital agenda for Germany is very important, and it will be implemented starting this year. Next slide, please. Uh, so I am representing the unit Convergent ICT. That means development of uh, digital technologies. What we do is we cover Internet of Services, Internet of Things, and Internet of Energy. But basically, we now concentrate on Internet of Services and Internet of Things. And what we do is we promote research and innovation in a pre-competitive stage. OK, next slide, please. Um, well, our cloud program uh, is going to close this year. Most importantly is uh, for us that we uh, establish trust in using cloud, particularly for uh, small and medium-sized companies. Therefore, I think it is very important that we establish trust in cloud. You know that there are other companies or other countries uh, that are not so trustworthy, so we, we Europeans should develop a framework for trusted cloud. Next slide, please. Smart data, it's our new program. We call it smart data because we think big data is not enough. Uh, smart data means that we concentrate of utilizing the data and we concentrate on the core uh, areas where Germany is uh, very strong, health, and uh, Mr. Panfilis, I think, uh, also said health is important in Italy, in your so, so health, mobility, manufacturing, of course, and energy. We concentrate on challenges in these four fields because we think it's important to strengthen the strength and not to put something mediocre on a higher level. Next slide, please. This is our philosophy, why we call it Industry 4.0, because of the four innovation cycles. We are now between the third and the fourth innovation cycle. Of course, you know, automation is uh, one of the key issues and uh, there we are very good at, especially also in Germany. Uh, but now it comes uh, automation plus networks. 
Of course, you know that even in the past, uh, there were a lot of uh, also networks and uh, long distance uh, manufact uh, engineering has been also an issue since the 90s, but now it is the reliability of the program standing behind it. And therefore, it is important that uh, the network, the cyber part of the physical system comes into play and we hope that FiWare will be a part of it as one alternative to other uh, software big companies we all know. Next slide, please. And uh, with our program uh, covering Industry 4.0, we start with autonomous systems at the moment because we think it's developing, it's evolving from Industry 3.0 to Industry 4.0 because uh, we think we have to put the cyber in the physical systems and that is currently our focus. Next slide, please. Uh, we have uh, several examples. The interesting thing is speed factory. It doesn't mean that we produce speed. I have to disappoint you. <laughs> this is uh, with Adidas and uh, it is an exciting thing for whole Europe and might be also an application for Fiware returning production to Europe. In the field of textile and shoe production, only 1% of textile and shoe production is now based in Europe, the rest out of the, uh, out in, in, especially in Asia. So therefore, if we uh, succeed in returning the production to Europe, then uh, we will be successful. And maybe Fireware can help us do this. Next slide, please. Uh, we have also electronic, electric mobility program. I will just shortly cover it. Uh, ICT is very important uh, to establish architectures for electromobility and I think uh, maybe Fireware could be interesting, interesting also uh, to develop uh, a new ecosystem for electric mobility. Next slide, please. So, I come to the conclusion, it is very fast, but I promise to be very fast too, because uh, you only have two slides, so, uh, and you can read the rest of it. What is important is the smart services at the moment, because we're at the threshold of a new development, and Fireware comes just like time to market, because uh, it is very important that uh, we uh, fill the gap between the cyber and the physical system with the new ecosystem, that can help boost economy with IT, with new platforms. Economy is changing. Look at Google. Google is not selling cars, it's selling mobility. And we will find more and more of these business models. And we have to find an answer. And we have to find the European answer. And I think that Fireware might be a good answer and an interesting alternative to the ones who are actually at the moment in the driver's seat. So we should stay in the driver's seat and only with uh, a real challenging and interesting alternative like Fireware, we have the chance of doing it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, uh, so Fireware has the opportunity of increasing the speed of development of innovation and entrepreneurship in service development. Is that your impression from what you've heard so far? Yes, this is uh, the big potential of Fireware. But of course, we have to work on it, and we, st mm -hmm. we are just at the point where we start. And uh, so therefore, we need enough player for it all over Europe. And we need uh, also a critical mass of industrial partners, small and medium-sized companies, but also big companies. Mm -hmm. And um, we in Germany, we will start a program uh, possibly next month, hopefully, it's not yet approved by the minister, mm -hmm. um, that is addressing the question of smart services, the new platforms uh, actually deciding whether Europe will be staying in the driver's seat or not. Um, and uh, Fireware um, might be a help and we at the moment drafting uh, in our tender saying you're uh, invited to use uh, Fireware uh, for smart services and I think we uh, will get into more into detail maybe later. Fantastic, thank you so much. Nuria, may I invite you to t take the stand? Thank you. Okay, Nuria is um, from Athos 
and um, she has um, been um, assisting the European Commission in terms of the future internet for a number of years and has got great insights of the Fireware platform and its detail. Nuria. Thank you very much. Let's wait for my presentation. Meanwhile, yeah, my name is Nuria de Lama. I work for Atos. And usually the European Commission says that hundreds of people go every day to their office to work on fireware. So I'm one of those ones. <laughs> <laughs> so I work on fireware almost every day. And uh, in fact, I decided to break a bit the protocol because the idea was to have a panel, but then I thought no one will present fireware. How can we discuss about fireware if we don't provide the main information? Because may maybe some of you are not so much aware of what Fiverr is providing. So my main objective today with this presentation, even if I will try to be quite short, is uh, giving you an answer about what is Fiverr specifically, because many people still ask, but what is it exactly? Is it a platform? Is it infrastructure? Is it services? What is it? And then the other question that I want to answer is why? Because we are not the only platform in the market, there are many people offering things, and normally many guys come to us and they ask us, what is the difference of what Fiverr is providing with respect to Amazon, to Google, and to other resources that you can find in the network? So I will also try to provide an answer to justify why you should come with us and try Fiverr. So I try to use the same title of the program, The Wonders of Fiverr. Let's see if I <laughs> describe it well. So understanding Fiverr, what is it exactly? Basically, we are talking about a cloud-based infrastructure plus a library of generic enablers. So a lot of resources for a developer that will make your life much easier. You will be able to develop your applications faster and in a cheaper way. But uh, what does it mean specifically? Basically, we are providing functionalities that will allow you to take advantage of advanced interfaces get information about the context that will enrich your applications, get access to big data capabilities, get connections with the physical world, not only to gather information for the context, but also to be able to act upon the physical world, get a flexibility in terms of resources, because this is cloud-based, and then I think that there are two important things that have happened in the last years. First of all is that we decided to extend the network of nodes that will provide access to fireware technologies. And then in a few years, in fact, I think it will be already this year, you will have a network in Europe of nodes providing processing and storage capabilities to all of you. So maybe you are not restricted to use the data center that is in Spain, but you may want to run an application in UK, and then you have to comply with some regulations about where you have your data. So you will also be able to use a node locally and select a place where you can really get access to generic enablers and store your data. And uh, also, we have realized that uh, the combination of all these functionalities that we are providing offer a very, very powerful platform for smart cities applications. So this is one of the things that you will realize that has a lot of power and a lot of potential for the future. And of course, we try to make everything very easy for the developer. Here, I will not go into the details, but you can get an idea of the kind of functionalities and the kind of technologies we are providing in this platform. Basically, cloud, uh, cloud infrastructure, data and services, IoT, as I was saying, to connect to the physical world, apps, advanced user interfaces. For example, now in the last wave of fiber capabilities, we have worked quite a lot on 3D and augmented reality features, so you will realize that you can really develop your application enriching your interfaces and the experience of the user. Of course, we provide security and privacy capabilities, and we also provide you with the tools to take maximum advantage of the opportunities of connecting to the networks and to mobile devices. So this is a very brief overview of what you can find there, but of course, what I think is that you will go to the Fiverr catalog, which is the place where you can really find all the generic enablers that have been built so far. There you can see the implementations, you can download them, and you can really start playing with the technology. So in this Fiverr catalog, you will find all the resources that you need to know about. So, but uh, in Fiverr, we don't understand uh, what we are doing without considering another concept, which is the one of the ecosystem. We think that if we only provide technology, even if it is sound technology, well-tested and very innovative, Despite that, we think it's not enough to, to create a, the attention of the developers. And we are providing 
an ecosystem where you can really meet a lot of people and where you can really nurture innovation experiences. So it's not only about the technology, but about everything that happens around this ecosystem that is uh, referred to as a fiber lab. And what can you find there? Basically, it's a meeting point for different stakeholders. Developers who develop their applications, cities that put their data at the disposal of the developers, companies that go there because they really want to suggest applications or to check what developers are doing, and of course, the fiber technology providers that will provide all the support you need and uh, all the guidance in terms of technology offering. But I think this is very important because it's a meeting place where you don't only offer the, the applications, but you, guide, you get also the demand. So you can get, for example, some cities that may be interested in your application. And I think this is a huge benefit for an SME that develops something. You can go there, host your application in Fiverr, and then it's not only one city that will look at your application, maybe you will get a lot of cities in Europe that will realize about the potential of what you have developed. And I think that there's nothing at this very moment in the market that offers this kind of facilities to developers. And uh, I said that I wanted to say the what, and since I don't have too much time, that's the only thing I will tell you, then you can ask us more questions. But I also want to emphasize a bit the why. Why to use this and not using Google or Amazon or the kind of uh, technology offering that you can find on the market? First of all, everything that we have developed so far is open source. So this means basically that you are avoiding vendor lock-in. We are not obliging you to play with one of the companies that are involved in the program. You are even free to download the generic enablers and create your own fiber instance. And you can be the provider of this technology. You can get an open source component and you can enrich everything and offer that as a proprietary software from your own company. So you have a lot of possibilities there. But furthermore, if you don't want to work with, uh, I don't know, Atos, my company, or maybe engineering, or maybe Telefonica, you can go to Deutsche Telekom or to Telecom Italia, just to give you some examples. So this really is disruptive, because you are really avoiding vendor lock-in. And we think that this is a great advantage for any developer that doesn't need to be with one provider from the first moment till the end. Another reason why I think that this is really a wonderful opportunity for any developer or for anyone that wants to be part of building Fiverr is that we are not only providing Fiverr Lab as an experimentation environment where you can really get access to the development resources, develop your application, host your application, and offer that, which is already covered. But it is the fact that besides the APIs that we are providing, we give also access to data. And I think that this is really valuable at this very moment. You can play with an application, but then you always invent your use case. Now what we are providing to developers is the opportunity of getting real-time access to data coming from cities. For example, from the Santander city, you can get access to the information that comes from the sensors and develop your own application. Furthermore, one of the things that you can do is develop your applications and then move your application to another city. And I think that this will really reduce the development cycle for any kind of the developer. So not only having access to APIs, as I said before, but also having access to data coming from many different sources. I think this is really a genuine point. A third reason, one of the things we did in Fiverr in the very beginning, because this didn't appear from scratch, we really made an analysis of the different requirements coming from different sectors. And what we have created here is the layer that will allow you to create applications uh, for any kind of sector of the major sectors in Europe. So we have provided all the common functionalities, and that's why we call these pieces generic enablers, because they are really generic in the sense of what they fulfill as a functionality. And uh, all these basic pieces will allow you to combine that technology with other software and create very powerful applications for logistics, for uh, energy, for smart cities, for health. So this basic layer, you don't need to go through it anymore. Everything is already developed for you, and you can start uh, developing your application, focusing on the real added business value of this app. And then, of course, at this very moment, there is a lot of offering coming from American companies. I'm not saying that maybe this is the main reason to change to us, but of course, we have a wonderful opportunity to promote and to support European technologies. So here, what you can see is a nervous plane. I think that we are exactly in the same moment. We are creating something that is European, but will operate globally. And this is the opportunity to make Europe very strong in terms of future internet technologies. So that's another reason to come with us. 
And uh, let me also complement this with something that was mentioned previously by Mario, which is the support and coaching. Putting the technology at your disposal, having this kind of innovation ecosystem, giving things for free, and uh, all the support that I have mentioned before is not enough if we don't go with you and we support you in the way you have to use the generic enablers. And uh, for that purpose, we have created a lot of resources that will enable any developer to do their applications very easily. So for example, we have set up something that we call the Fiverr University, which is um, an e-learning platform where you will really test your capabilities to develop an application with Fiverr generic enablers. There are lots of things that show you how to create your application, how to use one generic enabler, how to use a combination of generic enablers. So all these things will be there for your disposal. So we can guarantee that we will provide all the support and coaching capabilities you need to develop your things. And as part of this coaching and this support that we are providing, I would like to remind you that uh, we are organizing many startup weekend events. I think this is really a wonderful opportunity for anyone who wants to develop something with Fiverr because, as you can see, we will be present in many, company, in many cities in Europe in the following months. And these events are basically two days. The first day is a bootcamp that is devoted to provide technical training. So if you send your developers or if you are a developer yourself and you come here, you will know how to use the different generic enablers. And then the second day is basically the typical startup weekend event if we can call that typical. Okay, so please keep this in mind because this will be a wonderful source for you to understand what is Fiverr and to play with all the technology and use the generic enablers. Okay, Nuria? Yeah, I'm finishing already. And then what can, <laughs> what can you do with Fiverr? Since apparently I use the same examples that Mario used, so we are very well synchronized even if we don't, didn't talk to each other. We have a lot of applications now that have already been developed on top of this fiber technology. So we are not talking about theory. A lot of things are already out there. And here we have this smart taxi application as an example. We have the colleague from Footloop that will explain his application later on and can also guide you about the way they use fiber technology to create their company. But also Mario mentioned that in Valencia, uh, they are using a smart city platform that is fully based on fiber technology, and that is a great commercial achievement. But these are only very few examples, and basically my message here is that please visit the main stage and visit the fiber booth, because we have brought a lot of demos this time for you. You will talk to the technicians, you can check the way generic enablers work. We have a lot of technical demos. We have a lot of demos uh, with applications that we have developed for smart cities in Sevilla, in Malaga, in Lisbon, uh, in many cities, you will find at least four or five demos just out there. And uh, please, we invite you and come to ask about the technology and see all the demos that we have prepared precisely for you. Join us. Thank you very much for your attention. And I hope that this was useful at least for the discussion and for everyone that is thinking about using Fiverr. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Nuria. Sorry to put the pressure on you to tell such a detailed story in such a short time. It's a, it's a good record, um, we're told, Crystal says. Um, and um, I particularly like the idea of the Airbus analogy of uh, going global and starting the journey to tomorrow today. So thank you, we'll talk a little bit more. Christoph, may I introduce you? Christoph Muller, um, you, you've heard of Food Loop. Uh, Christoph is the inventor, creator, and CEO of Food Loop, which is an incredible application that does this. It saves it all, your money, and our resources. Christoph, please tell us about Food Loop. Exactly. Thanks, Johnny. I mean, you, you've seen, uh, first of all, thanks for the invite, and you've seen our logo first on in Mario's presentation. And you've seen an, an app mock-up in Nuria's presentation just a moment ago, and Johnny was just summarizing what we do. And um, be before I tell you how Fiware helped us um, and is helping us and will be helping us in the future, um, I'd love to tell you what we do in a nutshell real quick. Um, we are a disruptive innovation um, trying to build a, look, we build a platform that is looking to connect to every supermarket in the world by 2020. That's our bold vision. And what we do with that is we want to optimize the retailer's batch management. So when the retailer is connected to our platform on the back end, they can take all the information of products that are on clearance, sale, or close to the expiry date, discounted, as people know it in supermarkets when they put red tags on it. So what we simply do is we give the retailer an app that integrates with their mobile data capturing devices they have and say, hey, just upload that information and communicate it beyond the store to the Fruit Loop front-end app that we all consumers potentially will have. 
So we simply see automatically in real time what discounted, authentic on-sale offers the retailer has for you in stock right now. And that in a timely manner synced in real time all throughout the day. So you even know 10 minutes before the store closes if there still is something that will get you to go buy that, save money, save resources, and maybe even be a new customer for the retailer. That's what we do in a nutshell. So I have no slides. That was my um, elevator pitch for you this time. Um, and before, and the, the challenge with this, how, how Fireware helped us here is um, what we do has never been done before, meaning that we go from zero to one. Nobody was ever that bold and said, we build a platform that connects to every single retailer so they can automatically communicate their deals over there. So it's not like we build another e-commerce platform for shoes, which is going from one to two. We just take something existing and be another e-commerce platform, be another search engine. This is never done before. So this being a disruptive innovation for us, we didn't know quite where to start. We had a vision of what we wanted to do. We just did not know how back in 2012. The initial idea for Food Loop came up in 2012. We had dozens of different scenarios and revisions of how we were changing the system and redoing it over again um, until Fireway came to happen. And if I was to answer the question how, how Fireway helped us, I can totally agree with Ms. What, what Mario said this morning and with what Ramon emphasized multiple times. Um, it's the cost-efficient prototyping. They give you not only money, and I don't like to put the money in the foreground, which is nice because it eases up your things to, to um, put your vision into practice and work on it without being too much under the gun for having investors in your neck, just pushing you to reach the next milestone with your company. For us, this was good. And, and the background here is, sorry, sorry for that. In February, we won the Food Loop won the so-called Smart Business and Industry Challenge in Sao Paulo, which was awarded with 75,000 euros in the, as well. So that got us going to eventually found that company here in Germany in um, this April, actually, um, hired two more developers and got office spaces in, um, who didn't want to say the city we're in? We're in Cologne, by the way. I can, I can say that out loud, yeah. <laughs> but we'd also love to do business with retailers in Munich as well. Um, that's not the problem. Um, it's cost-efficient prototyping as they offer you um, a platform that is free. It's as simple as that. Before we heard from Fireware, um, we were hosting our service on Amazon storage. Mm -hmm. Once we heard about Fire, it's like the same thing, just for free, for the interim time being funded through the European Commission. So we can host the same stack and use our business model for hopefully another year until we have to rearrange on a business model and how we actually pay for that. But until then, it's cost efficient. We don't have to pay 500 euros a month to use a platform to pay for. Then we have... Um, mentorship and feedback in Brazil leading up to the finale where we won the 75,000 euros. There was people from Telefonica Spain, from Atos around, all um, giving us a feedback, yes, this is a good vision, you should pursue that business model. And here is this so-called generic enablers. This is what Fireware has to offer to you. There are software modules that are pretty general. You can take them, customize them, make generic enablers, and turn them into specific enablers according to what our business model is which for Food Loop are APIs that can connect to supermarkets. So for us it was like, hey, this is great. If we can have an app store, like uh, the Fireware one, send apps to the retailers that they can connect to so we get all the information. It's easier than working on a strategic partnership with SAP SE, which we're also pursuing and working on for years. So the visibility sitting here right now, after being involved from December until here, is a major thing for us because our customers are the supermarkets. Supermarkets pay us to connect to a platform. And I can give you another analogy from before we were involved with Fireware. We were talking with major retailers, Reve and Edeka in Germany, on their high up decision maker level. And they're like, you're a startup of eight people. As good as your idea might sound, how, what do you think um, we as a big conglomerate um, want to engage in a startup vision with you? We're not going to do that. You have no credibility, no authenticity, no acknowledgement from nowhere. But ever since we got that branding from the European Commission through Fireware, um, getting, having the credit, people like the retailers are, oh, you're actually serious. And um, we should consider doing business with you because it sounds not only nice, but you have what it takes to execute technology-wise with the team, infrastructure-wise through Fireware, and a nice marketing on top of that. So I think I checked everything off that um, Mario and Ramon were saying in regard to the um, advantages and how it helps us so far. 
Fantastic, Christoph. It's a fantastic example of how Fireware has helped a really great idea take, take form. Uh, but the business model is, is very interesting, that you can actually get the supermarkets to pay you in order to save products. How, how have you convinced them uh, to do that? Um, how did we convince the supermarkets? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. outlining. The idea to Food Loop came to happen in October 2012, and we saw there is a major problem, that every supermarket in Germany on average throws away up to full two, uh, two full shopping carts every day with pre-packed food products that are still good for up to several months mm -hmm. looking at their expiry date. This is a challenge that retailers face with a lot and batch management. They don't know what to rotate. They feel like it's too much, la too, too much labor to relabel products, put it on a separate shelves, and then maybe the customer is going to buy it. Looks pretty unattractive. If a customer doesn't buy it, I then have to throw it away. So why not throw it away immediately instead of just doing that? And that's where we come into play and say, just simply, why don't we communicate last-minute offers beyond the store automatically in real time? Yeah. It just made so much sense to me when I had that idea in my um, Master's of Media Management at the University of Cologne that this is an next logical step. Communicate that information there, and there a retailer draws in more customers, ha drives an authentic marketing campaign, saves in labor hours, saves in recycling fees. It was just... The business case was pretty clear to the retailers. It just took a lot of convincing and power telling them that we, as a startup, want to integrate yeah. with their point of sale. They were first telling us off saying, you don't imagine, you, you're not serious about connecting to our holy grail, our IT in food retail. And we were like, why not? <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> why cause, not? Because we were, we didn't know back then how the system worked. My background wasn't food retail. I just had to do research for one and a half years to <laughs> figure out how it works. Um, but, but this is a very interesting point, that it's why not? Um, so many large corporations, whether it be in retail or health or logistics or defense, yeah. will not uh, engage with small companies because they feel they are not on a par technically, legally, financially. But actually, why not? And in 2012, you've gone from 2012 to 2014 with a product. Exactly. And that's how we found our first customer. We won the 75K, got back to Germany. A broadcasting station was shooting a little documentary. And they also wanted to have a retailer in there to just give a statement. Mm -hmm. Shooting the documentary, the retailer afterwards, it was just set up and fake. The retailer woke up to it and was like, I like your concept. Can we do business together? I'd like mm -hmm. to pay you and have your service. So that is three supermarket stores in the Bonn, um, North Rhine-Westphalia area, that will lo publicly launch the iOS app this October, which is in three weeks' time. So maybe something we talk about in a moment is about the presence and the, the making available the information of products at a very quick, using the internet, in order that people can come to you and say, yes, why not? We'll talk about that in a minute. Exactly. Gianluca, may I introduce Gianluca De Torre? Um, he's from Dpixel and is the president of Dpixel. And perhaps, uh, Gianluca, you're uh, across the venture capital ar uh, arena, and perhaps you can uh, help us uh, think through how venture capital can be attracted to the Fireware platform and Fireware products. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. And um, well, I mean, I've been, as an investor, I've been hearing about Internet of Things, I guess, for the last 10 years. Um, now, uh, I think there, are, there, is a, there is something, I like, the, I like the plane living because mm -hmm. I think today we are, in fact, uh, into an, entering into a new era. Um, since, I mean, 10 years ago, this was something about vision of the future, you know, connected sensors and mobility, but that was really not the scenario that we are living in today, where we are immersed in connectivity. We have very powerful devices that can uh, receive and send information. Um, so the thing is, um, so we all see this is going to happen, right? So one day, you know, we'll be somehow connected to anything that happens around us. We will know about the context. And uh, the thing is that nobody really knows uh, what kind of application really will thrive in this environment. So um, I think that what's important here is that uh, in the next two years, we're going to have thousands of applications coming on board of this platform. So we're going to be observing very closely about how people will use it and what's going to be successful, because I'm pretty sure that out of these applications, some, things, some new business models will emerge. And I think the, the radical change of Internet of Things will be so big that, in fact, business model will be so different. 
and will be something that we have never experimented. Now, the thing is that in order for all of this stuff to happen, we do need some kind of a middleware platform in the middle of that. And it's not a technological thing to me. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not a technical guy also. So, you know, you can try to explain what fiware, fiware is about for like the next 20 years. I'm not going to learn about that and understand really deeply about it. But what I do understand as an investor, to create an ecosystem where there is an information exchange between data providers and information provider, people that have a data point and want to share it and resell it, to, you know, because data, there is value in this data. Now we have all this data available in all of these applications, in all of these locations, in all of these cloud services, in all of these software applications, blah, blah, blah. Now we need for all this stuff to interoperate. From a technical point of view, this is easy. You know, it's cloud, it's API, and blah, blah, blah. But from the business point of view, that's what I'm concerned about. So the business point of view, it's what is interesting to me, for me, my point of view about Fireware, because you need a trusted, third-party, independent mm -hmm. environment where you can do this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, there are two options. Either it's a commercial entity, and Amazon may win this, and there will be certainly lots of platforms, middleware platforms into this space. But for brokering, uh, real-time, context-aware, mm -hmm. very personal information where you know that right now I'm walking into the street, entering into that store, watching into that product, and I'm this kind of guy, and my, you know, my Facebook account, and my social, and all of this information is there. Now, of course, if you can connect all of that stuff, we can simply imagine the kind of business application that we can, you know, create. It's, it's a new world. But to do that, how do you do it? Because you need to trust, as a consumer, that my data will be handled properly. You need to trust, as an enterprise, that the data will be safe that the platform is telco grade, as we say, in the, in the industry. So it's something enterprise grade that can handle millions of you know, transactions, billions of transactions. And a startup will be ne never be able to do that. So, I mean, if you think about it, the vision of the commission in this, I think is very, I mean, it's a big vision. And uh, we have to take this as a journey. Mm -hmm. Probably in the beginning, you know, you have to consider Fiverr as kind of like an investment as a company enter into the environment and kind of invest in some time. But the thing is, very quickly, through the acceleration program in the next uh, couple of years, there will be thousands of companies connected to it and exchanging information there. And fundamentally, that's the interesting thing. So if we can bootstrap this ecosystem and start to build these data assets connected to, into each other, then we can really create a standard for this industry that can become the standard. And we need a standard. And it's, it's not a technical issue again, and it's not we have enough standards, and it's an interoperability, trustworthiness, business-friendly thing that we need. The system that, you know, anybody, and, and then it's accessible also. It's not only something for big corporation like a telecom, but, you know, my small startup, the, you know, I have 19 startups in my portfolio, I have teams with five people, mm -hmm. but, you know, they can quickly connect to that and open up new business channels. Also, the thing about standardization is very interesting, is that it opens up a market for you. I mean, once you have a successful application in one city, of course, you can try to resell it to any other city in the consortiums that are using fewer. So, I mean, it's creating, it boosting this movement that is something that we need to do now, but if we can succeed in the next two, three years, we do have an asset and it's not only a technology asset, but it's like an environment asset, a system where we can build really the Internet of Things for tomorrow. Fantastic. So you, you mentioned the word um, uh, trust and data, and clearly trust in data is a massive issue for any new company and indeed governments who are introducing convergent services, you've got to know that, in the same way the investor needs to know, that a system is trustworthy and, and, is, and data is private. Was that what you were indicating when you were talking about smart data rather than big data? Yes, one part of it, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is what I said. The key is how to utilize data intelligently. I mean, big data is okay, but a cemetery of data is of no use for us. <laughs> Right, there, are, there are so many data, uh, and uh, so the gist of the story is how to utilize it with modern technology and developing modern technologies further, like what we have with the Theseus program, the big one, the, 
uh, utilizing uh, semantics, ontology, mm -hmm. and uh, so, um, and combining this, what we already have, intelligently with uh, the key players uh, in each different country and what they need, like FIware, it's important. I mean, what is really needed? And then you combine it with the people who needed the right technology. And that's why FIware is interesting because uh, it is an offer and uh, you have to bring it to the market. And smart data was the gist of the story, concentrating on that where we are strong. And I think this is important for Europe too because we have to look at our individual strengths. Nobody would think about import, uh, exporting German humor, you know? That one might be not such a good idea. German engineering <laughs> is maybe better, you know? <laughs> like English cooking, okay. Uh, hey, 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 but, hey. <laughs> but English finances, why? I mean, you are, I mean, each nation is strong at things and not. Like yeah. a human being, too. I mean, I'm strong with that. Or we, why should I try to, to be a, a good sportsman, you know? I'm not a good sportsman. Why do I? But maybe I, do, I have other talents yeah. and try to boost it, like with a, with a pupil, you know? Ma. And, and and so the same with Europe. And uh, each country has really its strength. Look at that and boost it with IT. And not trying to find something where you're not good at. You know, this is the key. And therefore the food loop idea is good because you're thinking about what is really needed, give the IT boost to it, and strengthen the economy. Uh, yeah, I you know, just want to say one thing because I totally agree with what he's saying. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes we try to copy the Silicon Valley, the United States, you know, and I think this is wrong. I mean, I think that the value, the big competitive advantage that we have in Europe, it's huge competitive mm -hmm. advantage, is our diversity. Yeah. Everything, if you go into Silicon Valley, is standardized thinking. We, you know, we are so different that we can think out of the box because an Italian and a German are different. And that's the beauty of that. And so that's what we can leverage. And again, that's another thing that can make this platform powerful. Because, you know, there will be, let's say, different environments and markets and mindsets connected to it that can disseminate this kind of diversity. And but then it can be transferable across countries like c and cities. Of course, seamlessly. That's, I mean, we are a European Union after all, are we? That, that's, I'd also love to comment on that just yeah. real quick. That's what I mean what, what, um, when going from zero to one. Compared to Silicon Valley where you have established businesses, you can do a copycat and do that. Mm -hmm. Here, that is, could also be, if you have a, an idea as a European startup, you can also submit to the Fiverr Accelerator. But the major advantage we see in this accelerator is they give you money to take an idea from zero, where you don't even know where this is going to take. That is a factor of experimentation. They give you a software platform or money to just create something where you don't even know where that is leading you. And that's what I think is the major advantage over just taking and doing a copycat improvement from a Silicon Valley spin-off type of thing. Nuria. Yeah, is that uh, you have mentioned European strengths, and mm -hmm. I would like to highlight the main point that I mentioned before. The starting point of all this fiber thing was analyzing the requirements of our European industries. We realized that there are some that are really powerful, and we really wanted to fulfill their needs, their requirements, and do that in a fast and a cheap way. So that was really the starting point, and we didn't uh, come up with a platform with a lot of technologies that was not satisfying a very concrete need. So we were already taking into account the, the requirements of the market in order to be successful from that point of view. And uh, I also wanted to, uh, to mention this issue of data that has yes. appeared in the discussion. At this very moment, Fiverr allows you to keep your data wherever you want. I think that's a major advantage because uh, when you put your data on a cloud, you don't know exactly where it is. So this gives you quite a lot of control about that. And uh, we have focused the first phase basically on open data. I mentioned smart cities and many cities come to us and they say, how can I get engaged with you? I think that a lot of cities, if not all in Europe, have been obliged somehow by European directives to open their data. And, uh, you know, but a lot of people are not using those data. What is the purpose of having opened so many data if now no one is really taking advantage of those data to create innovative applications? So I think Fiverr can be a channel for you. I'm now referring to any potential city that may be here. Uh, is really a channel for you to foster the usage of all the data where you have been working so far. And all this effort you made in order to make it open will really be reinforced because we will allow that SMEs and startups create business around your data. So I'm really calling smart cities maybe to come to talk to us if you really want to get engaged with us and uh, make us expose your data to developers and entrepreneurs all over Europe. 
And do you see the accelerator as being the equivalent to the Phi Lab, Phi, Phi meeting place where developers can talk to each other, but the accelerator is a place that investors can talk to each other and find out about the applications that are available? Um, sorry, can you repeat it? The meeting place that you described mm -hmm. is for developers. Mm -hmm. Do you see the accelerator program as being the opportunity for the investors to start and meet? And I think that the accelerator program uh, gives a lot of opportunities to any SME, to any entrepreneur, because basically it's not only about technology, as you were mm -hmm. mentioning before, mm -hmm. it's also about coaching, about training, a lot of support along the way you need to create your application or your business. And Fiverr, of course, is putting all the infrastructure at the disposal of all the SMEs and anyone who wants to take part in this phase of the program. So everything goes together, we are fully aligned and we are really trying to highlight the European strengths to make SMEs and to make young people be successful in the future. I mean, we really need to find a future also for a lot of people that at this very moment doesn't have too much hope. And this is really creating a lot of resources mm -hmm. to increase our business in Europe. Gianluca, you mentioned you had a portfolio of 15 startups. Uh, are they all in the digital space? Yep. And, uh, can you, and are you seeing the opportunity with the accelerator to increase your portfolio? Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, totally. Not only that, <clears throat> I've sent already many startups to to the site, to get information. Again, uh, well, I come from an innovation ecosystem like Italy where funding is not easy to raise at all. Mm -hmm. And therefore, this is a great opportunity for Italian startups. I just wrote a, a post on my blog. Uh, last week, I had uh, 1,500 people reading and about 750 clicks came to the site. Um, so I think this is a great opportunity. Again, uh, the, the reason is that you can freely experiment. It's uh, free money, so that for a startup, this is a great opportunity. And also, it's a great opportunity because uh, existing companies can apply. So, for example, some of my portfolio companies oh, okay. that have a business model that makes sense into this context are thinking about extending their business by connecting to the platform. Just to give you an example, we have a gaming company. They don't do immersive, context-aware games. It's uh, social, web-based. Uh, you know, now they could uh, start to test that environment because you know it's very interesting. They target kids, uh, very specific manga <laughs> lovers. Then we have logistic company that uh, does um, uh, delivers fresh food uh, in the near. It's like a zero kilometer fresh social e-commerce. So you can, I buy meat and vegetables mm -hmm. in Milano from them, and it's picked up from the farms. So you can imagine how you know how many advantages you can have by knowing the contest around you when you move around with trucks. Uh, for marketing purposes, for promoting the service because it's hyper-local, for giving logistic information, for picking the packages. I mean, even for, um, you know, looking ahead, you know, we're talking about predictive technologies now. When all of this data is available, you will be able to predict a little bit more about what's going to happen, you know, in the next, uh, in the next days. Uh, or in the next hours or in the next minutes. I mean, so the range of things that we're going to see is so big and so, let's say, unknown. It's really like a white space. And, uh, and I do believe it's going to happen for sure. And we now have, let's say, the technological environment to do this. We, we have a mobile, we have the networks, we have the broadband, we have sensors. Um, I remember when, when I was an entrepreneur, um, it was about 15 years ago with my startups, at one point we had a discussion with Docomo. They came over from Japan because they wanted to buy my company. <laughs> and the uh, first meeting was pretty impressive for me. This guy came, and the, the guy was in charge of the 50-year business plan of Docomo. So, I mean, the Docomo company has a guy in charge of the 50-year business plan. Mm -hmm. So, they look at 50 years, and he starts to think about what they need to do. And he was telling me that, you know, for, they think that the biggest business in the future will be connecting things to the internet. There will be far, far, far more connections in business that, then uh, uh, the business will be much bigger than the business we know right now in the digital space. And, and you know, we're not talking about 50 years anymore. No. No, we're talking about 10, probably, 15 maximum. Or even less, Christoph. Or, or even just five, basically, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, so, some things are happening, but, you know, the minute that one day we wake up and we yeah. realize that we get, you know, a, an instant prompt uh, from the local bus because, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. my friend has missed uh, the bus before and automatically, you know, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Yeah. That's the thing. That's, this is a platform for experimenting, you know, interconnectivity of data from completely different providers in a, in a safe, let's say, useful way. And once, it, once um, adopted, applied, one can develop profitable companies. Of course, like any network, the value of a network once you're alone is zero. When you're, once you're two, it doubles. But then when it becomes three, four, ten, a thousand, ten thousand, you know, a million, 
value of the network goes up logarithmically. So, you know, initially you have to invest a little bit to get the traction going, but then after that, uh, you know, this system starts to transact data, uh, you know, the value of it, you know, as each one of us will start to connect their data or applications or information to the platform, it's going to grow very exponentially. So it could be a huge, you know, growth driver. It has to be. You that, think so, Christoph? Yeah, that's what Fiverr contributes to. In our case, we have two business angels on board with minor investments. But through Fiverr, the price we've won and the phase through that hopefully okay. all of you, including us, will be applying to gives us another grant, and therefore we don't need to take an external VC on board yet. Uh, that's, we, that's sad. <laughs> that's so sad. Not yet. We'd rather increase the company valuation. <laughs> exactly. And that's get him on that's board. also very sad. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's a little, only a win-win. I'm just I'd kidding. A little bidding war starting here on Food Loop. Um, Alexander, um, so we are seeing the opportunity of Firewares to have innovative development, disruptive development. How, how can government engage with these new opportunities that are coming forward? First of all, uh, we do something by uh, tendering uh, the new uh, yes. um, contest uh, where we expressly invite everybody to use Fireware. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, we have to uh, promote this and we have to uh, maybe also do some uh, summits like here mm -hmm. uh, to invite uh, entrepreneurs uh, to enter also um, this Fireware uh, possibility. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, uh, maybe we can also help uh, establish an organization uh, that uh, gives uh, this fireware uh, concept a lasting opportunity, finally handing it over to the industry, but maybe just mm -hmm. helping mm -hmm. establish an organization like in Italy was, uh, there's an organization, and maybe in other interesting, interested countries, but also on European level, we need this in order to keep it going, and uh, we are at the moment at the threshold. We do not know whether it will be Airbus or Galileo. So uh, it's up to you, okay? <laughs> You've got to take off. One of, one of the um, big issues that has come about in terms of the development of businesses, particularly with the public sector, is the issues of procurement, where governments and uh, large organizations have to procure and have to go through major uh, procurement processes. Do you think there's an opportunity, because of the Fireware European platform, to enhance this, the or reduce the, the uh, uh, levels of procurement that um, companies have to go through, especially small companies? Well, I'm not a specialist uh, with procurement mm -hmm. law. It is very complicated. It's actually in, in my ministry. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, this is uh, not Sorry. a really good example of uh, reducing uh, bureaucracy. Uh, but of course, if this uh, proves successful, mm -hmm. Uh, why not uh, check uh, with uh, e-government initiatives mm -hmm. uh, to uh, use this uh, in the in the future? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, of course this has to be in in accordance with the law. Of course. And they're complicated. I mean, in Germany we already have uh, e-tendering platforms and so on, mm -hmm. like in many other countries. Uh, but we, we had to double check whether it's suitable or not. But I guess it could be suitable. I think it's an opportunity for Fireware to engage with um, uh, governments at this level in terms of in, uh, aligning e-procurement to uh, speed the operation because what we're hearing from you guys is that it's got to be quick and to the large contracts that your companies will probably need if they're not just operating in the commercial marketplace is the opportunity to, to um, go through procurement easily. Yeah. So maybe, well, something for Fireware. I'm being told that uh, we've got to wind up, and um, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank our panelists, and I think to thank Alexander for bringing German humor to the <laughs> fore in this, in this session. And uh, it's a, a, a new export from, uh, from, from, from Germany. So thank you, Nuria, Gianluca, Christoph, and Alexander. Please give, show your...